so I'm just gonna continue on. Sorry for the interruption. Let's spread that a bit. Alright, so let's go back to the signal function. So 1 and minus 1. So there is clearly no definite limit between these two because if I try to approach 0, right, if I try to take the limit of this function as it, as it, um, as x approaches 0, I would have two values, minus 1 and positive 1. And that's not good. Well, of course, the function does not exceed 1, does it go below, beyond, um, below minus 1, but they have to agree for the limit to exist. So you could say the limit of this function, so the limit of SGN of x, as x goes to 0, is, you know, it does not exist. Okay, um, but if I consider left hand and right hand limits, this is called the left uh, right hand limit, and this is called the left hand limit. You know, it's left, and then this is right. Okay, you guys get it. So, if I consider its right hand limit, so this part over here, ignoring this part, if I make that an x plus or a zero plus, you would find that it is one, because this is the value it does not exceed as I approach from here. In fact, it's very constant. It's constant, even at let's say like two, at two, my even if like even if I don't, even if I don't consider left hand right hand limits, if I take the limit of two of the SGN function, it would just give me the sign anyway of two, which is positive one. So it's the same thing. And even if I put there 1.9999999 or even um, 2.0000001, it would still give me positive 1. It's constant. Okay? So it's now the opposite here as I approach from the left. And it will be minus 1 because this is the value that each of these values do not go below as I approach zero. Okay, so that's a good like introduction to um, left hand and right hand limits. That's a bit hard to sit because I'm sitting on the floor to record this thing. Okay, so what is there else to discuss? Continuity. All right, I think I'll just discuss continuity here because I think it would be too much to um, discuss about it in a separate episode. So, I'm just gonna discuss about continuity here. Okay, and I have I have a feeling that I'm gonna be gone again for a long time after this this uh, this episode. So I'm just gonna discuss it here. Okay, so so um, continuity. There's a lot of um, math that we can use to formalize this notion of continuity. Let me just fix the place I'm sitting on. There's a lot of notions in math, especially pure math, that we use to formalize the notion of continuity. But the most basic way of thinking about continuity is that I can draw the function of that, I can draw the graph of that function without lifting my pencil. So, I don't even have to write the axis here. Let's say that this is my function. If I can do that, it's continuous. If I do this and then I suddenly lift my pencil off the paper, this is discontinuous. So technically, it looks like that. So, I mean, formally speaking, you could say it's not connected using topology. Um, or you can say that the set of limit points at this interval here does not converge to a single element in the topology but um let's don't mind that so how do i sort of formalize this in the simplest way using the notion of limits so basically there are three rules that a function needs to satisfy in order for it to be continuous at a point so when we're talking about continuity we're either talking about at a point one point x or, or x equals a or maybe um, the entire function when the entire function is continuous, then it is continuous for all of its x values. No matter what x value I put into it, it's continuous at that point. And it satisfies these three conditions. And the first condition is that at the point x equals a, the limit of x equals a of f of x exists. So it's not does not exist, obviously. And 
it's definite i mean it doesn't have to be definite it but the point is it should exist the second condition is that <clears throat> f of a exists so of course i can't have a function we're in okay i plug it in there and then i can't graph it at that point basically i can't find i can't find um the y value directly at that point right so f of a must exist at that point and three the limit as x goes to a of f of x is precisely f of a so this is continuity these are the three conditions that a function must satisfy in order for it to be continuous <clears throat> So example, of course, x squared is continuous all throughout because no matter what value I pick, I can take limits on those values and then the corresponding f of a or the corresponding y values evaluated at those points also exist and they're the same. So x squared is a continuous function. Now, 1 over x is a discontinuous function mainly because there is one discontinuity at the point 0 because at the point 0, f of a does not exist because as I've shown over here I put 1 over 0 and 1 over 0 is not allowed it's a no-no in math right I mean technically it's not no-no because there are some parts in pure math that does allow 1 over 0 but the point right now we're in calculus right now so it's not allowed okay so when you learn some additional trivia from me about like pure math allowing seemingly crazy stuff like 1 plus 1 equals 1 that's boolean algebra by the way don't try to correct your professor or your teacher or try to be a smart ass about it just just don't because it's not their subject so just don't use my lectures as a sort of way to attack people or try to be a smart ass okay so okay going back to the lesson <clears throat> There's a discontinuity at the point zero because one, f of a does not exist. We've already broken one criterion from the three rules of continuity. And then next, the limit does not exist. So this does not exist. So we've already broken two rules in the three rules of continuity. And worse yet, the limits does not freaking, it does not agree. One, this does not exist. This does not exist. And we cannot say for sure that even if they do exist, it's equal, right? Although, to give it a little credit, if we take right-hand limits and then evaluate it strictly from there, it still wouldn't agree because it would still give me does not exist. And even if I, ta if I, even if I say, okay, I'm going to take the right-hand limit, it's still going to give me does not exist. If I try to plug it into this requirement, it would give me plus infinity equals does not exist but infinity does exist it's a bound or at least it's an it's a value that the function does not bound so we're contradicting ourselves here so technically 3 is broken for 1 over x so it's a discontinuous function but you can say that x is continuous for all points excluding infinity uh, excluding 0 because at even at the point 0 0.000001, the limit does exist. You can prove that. And at 2, the limit does exist. At minus 2, it exists. At negative 0 0.000001, it does exist. At infinity, it does exist. In fact, it's 0. Like, you'll see that it gets smaller and smaller. The, the y value gets smaller and smaller. So in, at infinity, you can reasonably conclude that the limit is 0. But really, at zero, it's discontinuous. All right. So if you want to sugarcoat, you're talking to your friends about functions or nerding out about functions, you can say, oh, well, 1 over x is discontinuous at zero. But it is continuous everywhere else. And also, polynomial functions like x squared plus 4x plus 4, they're immediately continuous. No matter what you do, what values we take, what f of a we take, what limit we take, they're continuous all throughout. But things get a lot more tricky when I consider rational functions. So functions of the form f of x over g of x. 
So example is um, x squared plus 4 over x squared minus 4. There is a discontinuity of, yeah, when, we, when I say it's discontinuous at a point, we say that that point where it's discontinuous is a discontinuity, okay? So this function has a discontinuity at um, precisely 2. When I take its limit as x goes to 2, right, it sort of, um, yeah, it would give me uh, 2 squared plus 4, and that's 2 squared minus 4. 2 squared is 4, so that's 2. Uh, I'll just do this anyway. 8, this is 8 over 0. And that's a no-no. I have an 8 times 1 over 0, and 1 over 0 is a no-no. So, it has a discontinuity at 2. Well, but what are we going to do about that? So, what we want to do, when you're, when you're given this type of situations, is that you're going to try to use all the tools you've learned from algebra to get rid of the denominator, or what's causing this to have a 1 over 0. In this case, it's that x squared minus 4. So, maybe you want to do is, um, maybe say x squared plus 4, and then I can expand this by a difference of two squares, x squared minus 4, I can expand it into x minus um, 2 times x plus 2 x minus 2, x plus 2, and then maybe I can cancel out that squared and that 4, um, but the thing is, I it's best expanded like, um, um, I can do complete the square, but uh, the point is, you're supposed to cancel it out such that you get a definite value. Um, I think I want to modify my function here okay let's modify it so that it's a much straightforward computation so I'm gonna use x squared plus uh, 4x plus 4 and then this is the different value so we'll just sort of disregard that and um, 4x plus 4 I can factor that into x plus 2 squared and then that's x minus 2 times x plus 2 and I'm gonna cross out this squared and this x plus 2 because you know same base um, different exponent or right, so, yeah, and then just sort of subtract them and then I get zero this becomes one uh, Zero anything to the zero just gives me one. So that's one. So that leaves me with x plus 2 over x minus 2 and That still sort of gives me a discontinuity um, But nonetheless if it's something that if you end up with something like this it's best that you sort of evaluate it via calculator instead, like getting closer and closer to 2. But you guys get my point, is that when you are given a rational function or a certain function wherein you get a 1 over 0, which is a no-no, you want to use all your tools in algebra to try to modify it so that it doesn't become that, so that you have a limit that does exist. So even though f of a does not exist, at least you can find its limit, right? So it's sugarcoating a bit, I guess. So that's like my quick, I don't know, quick introduction to limits. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I, I hope I can discuss about derivatives soon because it's really, it's a very cool topic and it reaches out to a lot of math out there. And there's just a lot of my play and there's a lot of stuff I really also want to discuss with you guys. Especially topology because it's the thing that I'm studying right now as a hobby. I'm an engineering student, right? But my heart belongs to pure mathematics and I'm doing it as a hobby. And topology is just my thing right now. I mean, it has been for a couple months now. And I really want to discuss a bunch of that stuff with you guys. But my plate is a bit full right now. Um, so, yeah, just sort of stick with this video for now. So, yeah, here's a little, you know, my, my thighs, but... Yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for bearing with me on these breaks. And so, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.